and he brought the hardware, the Daytona 500 uh, trophy there. Now, that's not yours that you have. Do you get a replica of that, or is... I get the one from Victory Lane. When you win, you take the one from Victory Lane home, and I believe this might be the one that is up for grabs this coming Sunday in Daytona for the Daytona 500. Where are those trophies at home? Those trophies are sitting next to the fireplace in plain view. If, if I walk into your house, how long does it take before I know what you do for a living? Probably 10 or 15 steps. Oh, what, what, what am I going to see? Well, there's the uh, Daytona 500 trophies. There's the 1999 Xfinity Series trophy. There's my 2004 Bristol Cup trophy. Just to name a few, there's about six trophies, seven trophies at home. The rest are over at Junior Motorsports. Okay, but doesn't that make it tough for your wife to decorate with that kind of hardware around? I mean, it's kind of hard to do that, Dale. Yeah, I think uh, that's why there's not, that's not, all, all my trophies aren't at the house. I think, um, you know, it gives. But put them in the man cave. Put it in the basement there. Let good, Amy decorate the house. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we're heading in that direction. All right. Uh, full introduction <laughs> here. The uh, two-time Daytona 500 winner. You can catch uh, Dale Jr. He competes in the Daytona 500, the Great American Race, at Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern on Fox, NBC Sports Group's coverage of the 2017 NASCAR Cup, uh, Cup Series. Kicks off Saturday, July 1st on NBC. You've been to hell and back, though, when you think about it here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't. you had the concussion, and then we waited for you to come back. When did you start feeling good or good enough to even talk about it? Uh, well, I had to... I was pretty transparent during the whole process, and that was, number one, the reason for that was just for my own peace of mind. I didn't want people wondering about me or making their own assumptions and getting bad information out there. So I thought, you know, I'm in control of it with social media and everything that we have now at our fingertips. I can control the narrative and help people understand how bad this is or what I'm dealing with. And so they're not is they're not impatient. I think my doctors told me to keep the stress level down, and that was going to be, uh, that was going to help me recover quicker if I was less stressed. And so... I needed to get that off my mind, people worrying about me, wondering about me, pushing, wondering when I'm going to return. So if they could see it with their own eyes, they could relax, and I could relax. Did you ever think about retiring? Oh, yeah. I mean, when, you, when you're when at its worst, when, when, when you're feeling your worst, you don't want to do nothing that puts you there, right? So I wasn't blaming racing, but I didn't want to get back in a car because uh, I was feeling this way. That's, you know, the car got me there in a sense. Uh, so what, what, what's the worst day? Uh, well, you know, you get up, you, you get up and you f almost can't get off the couch. Like uh, your balance is so bad that standing up to get off the couch is uh, or turning a corner and you know, walking through, uh, through the kitchen, turning a corner, opening the fridge, turning your head, going from the fridge to the cabinet, just doing a 180 uh, would, you know, you almost fall over. Uh, your eyes are shaking with every step. Your eyes, you can't keep your eye on a target 10 feet away. Every step knocks your eyes off that target and they kind of bounce around and you can't find what you were looking at. You have to stand perfectly still to be able to see anything. Did you get nauseous? Lots of, yeah, I had some nausea. Um, I, you know, every concussion is different. Every guy has different symptoms. Some people have different issues, sight or, or, or mental issues and what have you, mood issues. Everybody faces it uh, a different way and, and needs different styles of treatment. But, uh, it, yeah, when it was bad, I did, I, you don't even care about racing. I know it's hard to understand or hard to realize, you know what that means, but when you're sick, you just want to be better. I had my wedding coming up on New Year's Eve. Um, hunting season was coming up in November. I had all these things. I'm like, I told my doctor, I said, there's, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to have any symptoms at my wedding. You know, that's all I cared about was just being able to go through that with a clear mind and be able to enjoy it. You know, every day was not even tolerable with those symptoms. And so I wanted, you know, and he's like, all right, man, you know, we're going to work hard. You're going to work hard. We're going to fix it. And we did. And by, by November, the days were tolerable. All this started in, in July. Uh, but all, you know, the, the days became tolerable around November. You know, starting in November, I think, uh, you know, I got into deer stand, um, you know, 20 feet in the air, uh, holding the bow and arrow. I got to be able to stand up on this uh, tiny little platform to shoot and all that. And I felt confident enough about my balance at that point that I was checking. I started checking boxes like, all right, man, this is I'm going to be fine. You know, what was that first time behind the wheel? 
December uh, 14th, we went to Darlington and ran for five hours, probably 200 laps. And the first three or four laps felt, uh, it didn't fit like a glove. You know, it didn't, it felt, uh, I felt, it felt a little cumbersome. I didn't have any symptoms, but I just felt raw and, and not, you know, when you go to, even when you go to, even after racing for year after year after year, every time you go to Bristol, for example, it's so fast that your mentally takes you about 30 laps to sort of get caught up to what you're seeing, your mind to get in that mode and see things happening so quickly to be able to react to them just right. And that's kind of what I went through the first three laps. The first three or four laps, I, I was getting up to speed mentally with what I was seeing and, and feeling in the car. By the end of the day, I felt like me and the car were one piece. Like, I, me and the car were one piece, and, and that's exactly how you want to feel. I felt completely comfortable in everything I was feeling. Football players try to hide concussions. You know, I don't know if you have a different respect for those who play football, but this isn't your first concussion. Did you try to hide the concussion? The, uh, this concussion here, I wanted to, I didn't try to hide it because I'd kind of been through that before. In 2012, I layered two concussions together and got in some real dangerous territory doing that. I uh, tried to hide a concussion from a test at uh, Kansas in 2012, and then I got in a wreck four weeks later and got in some real danger. Uh, was that concussion related? Right, yeah. There was. I had a concussion, tried to race through it, and got in another crash and another hard lick and layered two concussions together, and that's very dangerous when you get them close together like that. If you get one, you need to get out. You know, every, we're starting to understand and learn the new, new ways of approaching this. Obviously, uh, you got to get out and recover. And I didn't allow myself to do that. And being injured and getting into another incident was uh, the worst thing you can do. So, I, I got this concussion uh, over. I, this was a a cushion that accumulated through several accidents this past year. It wasn't just one event. So it was a lot of wrecks that brought on this problem. And it can't, all the concussions I ever had in the past, you wreck, you knew you had it. Like you knew it the minute you got stopped and everything slowed down that something wasn't just right, right? This one, I felt great. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I had a few more wrecks in the season than I normally did. And those accumulative wrecks and impacts uh, brought on these symptoms that I'd never felt before in prior incidents or prior concussions. Uh, these, these symptoms I tried to link to allergies. And so, yeah, so I had my eyes hurt. My eyes were kind of burning. My vision was blurring. And I'd started getting allergies the last couple of years. So I'm thinking, man, these allergies, maybe I'm getting worse and worse and worse. And I was talking to my teammate, Jimmy Johnson, who deals with allergies. And he had, yeah, there's a, those are the symptoms. I went to my family doctor, got prescribed meds for allergies. He's like, yeah, it looks like allergies. Oh boy. And so I called my owner the next day and I said, something's going on. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, he said, go to uh, Dr. Petty, who is the neurosurgeon in Charlotte that we all go see when we have issues. He's, I said, you're right. I should probably go because if this gets any worse, I'm not going to be able to drive. I'm starting to feel dizzy and all that Does stuff. he call himself the king too? Dr. Petty. Dr. Petty. He's no relation to Richard. No, uh, but, I, but yeah. No, if he thinks he's the king too. He is the king. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He he is. Uh, my dad trusted him for years. He's been in the sport as a trusted neurosurgeon and doctor for decades. Um, so I knew I'd worked with him in 2012 to get through that concussion. So I knew I was in good hands. But it didn't dawn on me like this is from crashing. You know that because I. Before, when I would wreck, I knew I had it, and that's what I'd gotten used to. And so this past season when I was wrecking, I'd get a car, I feel fine. I'm like, I'm fine. I don't have a concussion. Just yeah. going through, you know, just another crash. Go to the next race. And this kind of came on much like a flu or illness would, really slowly. Yeah. And then... Uh, what do you think your dad would have advised you to do? I don't know. You know, he... Because he... He drove through everything. He drove with a broke neck. Um, he, didn't he break his uh, broke his sternum. sternum? Yeah, broke his sternum. I, you know, I never. We never talked about uh, concussions and head injuries. The the whole. It, it wasn't that I. I didn't even know if he ever had any. You know, I knew he broke his collarbones. He broke both collarbones in a wreck in '79. Broke his femur in '82. 
you know, he's had some bad crashes, but we never, I never saw him. Uh, I mean, I was around him enough that I would have noticed, but I never saw him with a concussion or wit or witnessed any, I've never witnessed anyone with this type of situation before. So, and the stigma and the whole attitude toward how you just, you race through it, you work through it. Yeah. It was the same way in all sports. Yeah. Um, but that's slowly changing, especially with, I mean, you know, you can certainly race with, you want, you would try your best to race with injuries, but now that we've learned what we've learned over the last several years, especially through what they've done in the NFL and all these great doctors that are, that are trying to treat these folks that, uh, that are getting injured, we've learned so much to be able to be a little bit smarter about it. We'll continue with uh, Dale Jr. His uh, wife, Amy, is here. Uh, we have a quiz for Amy. Since, awesome. Since you're newlyweds here. Like, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Does she know everything about you? Awesome. Yeah. And she, uh, 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 Paulie, how long have we uh, researched these questions? For 14 Amy? minutes. All right. Uh, that's <laughs> usually, that's long for us. All right. So we'll continue with uh, Dale Jr. Uh, no more concussion questions. Okay. How's that? Sure. We'll talk uh, Redskins if you want. I love Redskins. Let's talk it. Yeah, but you might need a new quarterback there. I'm a little worried about that situation. Yeah, you should <laughs> yeah. be. You should be. Uh, maybe you buy the Redskins. I don't have that kind of money. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. I don't. I don't have that kind of money. You know people who have that kind of money. Well, yeah. What about the France fa uh, France family? The France family. I don't know. I don't know that I would want the France family. I would want to race NASCAR, and the France family owning the Redskins would be a little weird for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe you and LeBron James could buy the Redskins. How's that? LeBron being the majority owner, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get Tiger Woods in there, too. Get all Sounds good. Yeah. All right, we'll continue with Dale Jr. right after this. Uh, if you're watching on DirecTV, the Audience Network, Channel 239, or the NBC Sports Network, you're seeing two lovebirds. They're just staring at each other. <laughs> it must be nice to be in love there, Jr. It is, it, especially, uh, you know, Amy and I have been together a long time, so we, uh, we know each other really well. She knows me better than anybody else, and... That helps out a lot. All right. Uh, full introduction here. Uh, Amy is uh, Dale's uh, new wife. He got married in January. Uh, of course, Dale is the driver of the 88 Nationwide Insurance Chevrolet for Hendricks uh, Motorsports. Uh, we came up with a quiz. We spent about 15 minutes on this, so obviously a lot of time on this. Um, so, Aim, I'm going to see how well you know Junior. Okay. All right. Dale, uh, Dale's middle name is? Dale. Uh, and his first name is? Ralph. Okay. First name is Ralph. Did you think about going with that? Is that your grandfather's name? Yeah, Ralph Lee Earnhardt was did, my grandfather. Did you ever think about staying with Ralph to stay away from the Dale Dale Senior? Well, comparison? when you know when I had that com, <laughs> I, you don't think about that when you're four or five years old. <laughs> oh. They sort of, <laughs> yeah, they sort of steer you in that direction oh, for okay. you. They make that decision for you at early age. Okay, yes. okay. So your dad said you're you're Dale Jr. Yeah, yeah. You had no choice there. Yep. If you had a choice. I like Dale Jr. I mean, okay. it's, it's right. opened some doors. All right. Uh, <laughs> Dale. <laughs> Literally. Dale played what sport in high school, Amy? Soccer. Backup soccer player. Yeah. I was a fullback. I didn't know how to – I had no ball control, so I couldn't play wing or anything like that. But I could stop a guy from scoring. I mean, that's pretty easy, right? Just get in his way and yeah. kick, kick the ball. So uh, I played fullback, but I was, I was on the bench. In high school, Dale was an A student, a B student, or a C student. C student. C yeah. student. C student is correct. That's three for three. Dale prefers to wear baseball hats backwards or forwards. Both. Both? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I thought it was backward. Have you graduated to forward? I think I'm. Yeah. It I think. depends on his hair that day. Oh. oh. How often he's had a haircut. If it's the bigger his hair is. Depends on how he wears his hat. <laughs> now, I got a picture three weeks ago, Paul. Is that right? Yeah, three weeks ago, you hat, went hat backwards, hat backwards. in the yeah. driver intros. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, well, well that's, to keep it on. For that. that's to keep it on because it's going to blow off. Oh, You're in the back of a pickup truck riding around 60 miles an hour, so you got to oh, turn around backwards okay. so it doesn't right. uh, end up on the ground. Dale's favorite sandwich is? Oh, man. <laughs> Uh-oh. Boy, this Clearly, one. I'm not making this. <laughs> yeah. Think about san what? Think sandwich. Well, the sandwich I make on my race has got no, turkey and no. buffalo sauce on what? it. What sandwich? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> banana and mayonnaise? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I don't make that. I don't make those. <laughs> banana and mayo? Yeah. That is a North Carolina it thing. It is. It's a... <laughs> I think it's I, I think people in, in in the South Atlanta New Orleans I had all kinds of people that knew what it was but anybody 
north of Virginia or west of the Mississippi thought it was the worst idea in the world. Well, didn't Elvis eat those kind of sandwiches? Elvis ate... Uh, fried banana peanut butter. El- Elvis banana. ate banana mayo peanut butter fried. Oh, fried, okay. Deep fry the whole sandwich. <laughs> pound of bacon, too. He had a pound of bacon sandwich <laughs> that he deep fried. <laughs> That's no joke. Which of Dale's relatives had the most kick-ass mustache in history? <laughs> I'd say his dad. Yeah, there you go. Well done. You All right, right. Wait, we got one more. Oh, you got another? Oh. Yeah, I was going to ask her the, the final and most important question. Okay. All right, so on... On NFL Sunday, I got you a Redskins jersey to wear. Whose Redskins jersey do you wear? Um, oh, boy. Riggins? Riggins. Riggins. John, John Riggins. 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 Yeah. Uh, nice. Diesel. Nice. Crack up that diesel. <laughs> right. That's right. How is he when, when the Redskins lose? How is he He's on that pout, Sunday? He pouts. He's in a he bad does? mood. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. More beer yeah. is consumed when the Redskins lose. <laughs> hey. When they win, too, we can yeah, right. <laughs> How many How many uh, NASCAR drivers went to the wedding? Oh, I guess around 10. Who, really? who went? I would say. Yeah. Clint, Boyer. Clint Boyer was there, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Danica. Ricky. Ricky. Who Stan had the House. most fun? Kyle Busch. <laughs> Kyle and Danced Samantha. his tail off. Yeah. Him and Samantha. <laughs> yeah. We were on the dance floor. We had the, obviously, it was on New Year's, so we had this big New Year's party afterwards, and I looked to my right, and they are like, He's doing the professional dancing. <laughs> but yeah. does he dance like he drives, like all over the place? Yeah. But it was like a, per, it was purpose. Like this dance, I mean, they weren't just goofing off dancing like the rest of us. Oh, they so they had, had rehearsed they had, this. They had to do classes or something, don't you think? That seems like it. He had some yeah. very specific moves. They were, yeah. Uh, Danica, a uh, decent dancer? I'm sure. Yeah. Just dropping it like it's hot a little yeah. bit. Okay, nerves, let's say, before uh, Sunday's race, Daytona as opposed to getting married, walking down that aisle. How com- Compare the nerves between the two. Yeah, with with getting married, I knew I was going to win. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when the race starts, you don't know we're going, if you're going to win or not. She's your checkered flag. Yeah. So I, knew, I was like, this is a race I'm going to run, and I know I'm going to win. So Look at you. I had all, all confidence in the world. But how nervous uh, are you going to be on Sunday? Uh, you know, considering I'm, everything you've gone through. Oh yeah, I mean, with the injury and everything coming back, uh, I'll be nervous uh, about myself, my performance, my decisions, my choices. Because in, in plate racing, everything's about instinct and making the right choice to do the right thing in the draft. And you know, so I'll be make. I want to do a good job to make sure that I put forth a good account of myself, my team. They're gonna, you know, we got a great car. We're starting on the front row. It's fast. Uh, so I'll be. I'm always. I mean, I'm. You know, it's human nature, I think, to be nervous. So I've always kind of been nervous before qualifying, before races. It's nothing that I ever got used to. Uh, so that, that those nerves will be piling up. What about you, Amy? I'm as nervous as he is. When he's nervous, I'm nervous. It's kind of an energy that passes around the room, you know? And you have <laughs> no control over anything. That's right. At least he's driving. Right. Like, you have to sit. Where do you watch? I watch in our motor coach. We travel with our dogs. And nobody's watching me in there. I can yell the TV as loud as I want to. And I usually have the TV pretty low, and I listen to the radio so I can listen to what he's saying with the spotters and everything in the car. Would you want your kids to drive? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the only thing about it is it's super expensive. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I've, I've got a lot of friends, uh, buddies that have kids. That try, you know, they're getting them into racing, and it is a very expensive activity, even at a young age for a kid. So to try to... It's a great play. It's a great way to treat sportsmanship and to, and to teach sportsmanship. So I know that my nieces learn quite a bit from winning and losing when they race. Uh, so I think it's a great, a great father son or father daughter kind of activity. But man, I mean, is it expensive? Just to race at a low level as a 10, 12 year old can yeah. be thousands of dollars, you know. And it's just not like it used to be when I started up. When I started up, me and my brother built the street stock and went racing for 400 bucks. Built the car and everything, motor, and uh, you can't do that these days. Who's a better driver on the street, you or Amy? Well, I, I don't know. I, I uh, typically I'm driving. He's on his iPad. Yeah, so you have to. She say drives me. fine. We haven't crashed yet. Um, <laughs> I think I can say the same for me. Yet. Yeah. Neither one of us had any problems. So, I uh, she's I'm really really uh, 
slow and lazy on the highway. She's all, she's much faster than I am. That's true. The last time we rode together, I had to tell him to speed up. He yeah. wasn't going to speed limit. <laughs> I get into pondering and thinking and just cruising. Yeah. And because uh, I get I race, you know, for a living, so I go fast. Enough oh, you race me. for a living, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's all. You know, I get all I get my speed out on the racetrack. If, if I said you could win the Daytona 500 or the Redskins could win the Super Bowl, I would uh, take the Daytona 500 every time. I love the Redskins. It's been since 91, though, since we won a Super Bowl. So what's another year? <laughs> if I win a Daytona 500, if you're guaranteeing me the win at the Daytona 500. So what if what if I give I give you this Daytona 500, but I don't give you any more Daytona 500s, but the Redskins will win a Super Bowl? I'd take this Daytona 500 and a Super Bowl. You would? Yeah. Okay. That's a guaranteed win. Would you – now, let's say you have a successful season. Let's say you win the championship. Would you consider a John Elway walk away winning If I a championship? won the championship, I'd retire on the stage in Vegas. <laughs> Hell yeah. You would. <laughs> Probably. Really? I mean, why, wouldn't it be the best way yeah. to go out Yes. on top? But it's rare when guys do that. I it, know, but it's rare anybody wins a championship at 43 years old. But do you, you know? feel old? No, not yet. I what, mean, I'm... What goes first on a driver? I don't know. You know, I've always wondered... I've. I always wanted to talk to guys that have retired, Dale Jarrett and other people that I trust uh, that would shoot me straight as to what happens and where does – do you lose passion? Do you lose uh, skill? Do you lose – you know, what is it that, that sort of wanes first? When do you know that you're not doing the job anymore, that somebody else needs to get in there and do it? Uh, I have hadn't, hadn't had that conversation yet, but I certainly would love to. What would your dad be doing now? I think we'd still have DEI. Uh, think, You'd be working. Would you work with? Him? I would hope that I would still be there. Um, I think Di would still be around. He was such a great businessman. I have all the faith in the world that that place would would still be fielding race teams and and have happy sponsors and uh, have had a lot of race wins in between, uh, you know, then and now. And I would love to still be a part of it. I wonder how he would have retired, though. I, I get the feeling, you know, as the as great a competitor. I think he already had his plan. Oh, I don't he know did? That, yeah, I think he did. I think that he had his plan. I think, and there's a few people, not me included, but I think there's a few people that he may have shared that with uh, as to, you know, particularly in his inner circle as far as his businesses go, as to what he was going to do driving-wise over the next couple of years. And I think he had <coughs> a, a plan in his mind to, to scale it back, and it wasn't but a year or two more of racing before he was going to retire. Do you bring racing home with you? Uh, it's a bad habit, yeah. Like I mean, what? It, so if it's you great, bring a win it, home. It's, it's a great it's, habit because uh, I mean, every time we win, all the guys on the team, I don't, I don't care if it takes them till 4 o'clock in the morning to get home, we have a party in my basement. Uh, every time we win, we've celebrated in the basement. If it's, you know, whenever they get home, I'm, I'll, wait and, I'll wait for them and have the beer cold. Uh, <laughs> the worst, but the worst thing is, is uh, I think the one thing that I struggle with is – uh, yeah, when I don't run well, I bring it home, and I can't get over it until I can redeem myself, which means I I got to get back in the car, which doesn't happen till the next weekend. So, it's uh, it takes a couple days to get over. It. You've changed a lot though in the last two years, just from me talking to you and observing. I thought the Tommy Tomlinson interview in ESPN the magazine was spectacular, and Amy, I have to credit you. I think for a lot of this, I think he's, you know, it feels like he's he's found himself, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, maybe you're acting your age, Junior. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Certainly, yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens to us all. One day I hope to get there. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like you've found out a whole lot about yourself in the last two years. Yeah, Amy's been a huge, huge part of that. And, uh, you know, she, I was such a uh, introvert and uh, wouldn't expose myself to just normal experiences day to day. And she's helped me kind of get out of my shell and show me, how to be more comfortable in and around people and, and just get over my social anxieties. I have a lot of anxiety and social uh, situations. Um, and she's helped me get more and more confidence to be able to get out and do things. So and, when you get in front of people, mm -hmm. like you're, you're fine racing a car at 180 miles an hour. Yeah. But if I put you in a crowd with 20 people, it's... It's weird. <laughs> yeah, I have social anxiety. I think, uh, uh, and it, 
you know, any I wouldn't go anywhere I wasn't comfortable going, and and I prolonged that for so many years, and it and so yeah, I had a lot of catching up to do, and Amy's helped me kind of get out and be myself. All these other, you know, personal experiences going through the injuries and stuff too is uh, helps you learn a lot about yourself and get your priorities sort of straightened out and what's important. Um, that's all been a big deal, and she's like I say, she spearheaded all that. She was she's been there every every minute ever since I got hurt, all the way through the process of recovery. The workouts, the evaluations, the conversations and meetings with every doctor, family member. She was in every single one of those. Well, but if you think about it, I mean, every year you go back to where your father died and you know people are going to ask you questions. You know it's coming. You just don't know when it's coming. And yeah. I don't know how. And I've said that before to you a couple of years ago, just to process that. Nobody else can understand that. But you've. And, and I don't know if we make too big, if I make too big of a deal of it, but I think it's remarkable that you have allowed yourself to open up to process it. And I don't know how long it took to do that, but I couldn't imagine trying to do something like that. Yeah, I think the, um, the opening up and being honest and transparent, at first you're kind of nervous to be judged. Uh, but eventually, uh, if you don't give people information, they make their own assumptions and decisions about what you're going through. And that's dangerous, too. And, and sometimes they can be incorrect and wrong and, and bad information can get out there. Rumor can become fact. And especially in the world we live in with social media and, and stuff just, you know, there's stuff just flying around out yes. there. So I'm just trying, you know, I think going through uh, the process of recovery and everything, being so transparent and showing people what we're dealing with helped me have peace of mind that I knew people weren't worrying about what I was doing. They knew they knew the information and knew what I was dealing with. Once again, I credit you, Aim. You had to do <laughs> – there's something different about him the last two years, and that's, that's pretty remarkable. And you're in love, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> good luck this weekend. Thanks. I appreciate Th thank it. Thank you. And uh, if you're watching, by the way, uh, he brought in the Daytona 500 trophy. How much that weigh? I don't know. What do you think? 150 pounds, 100 pounds? Yeah, I can something pick like it up. It's not that she can pick it up. Amy oh, can pick it up. 30, 40 pounds. 30, yeah. 40 pounds? Really? Yeah. And we'll see if she picks it up on Sunday. <laughs> no pressure. The driver of the number 88 Nationwide Insurance Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports sees a Dale Jr. and his uh, great wife, Amy. Thank you for coming in. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.